Kaminsky and Ishvara. So, brother, tell us how you got involved with uh, Ananda Marga or Sadhana. Um, well, at an early age, I was speaking, I guess you'd say. I, I was reading everything I could get hold of. Uh, no one around me at the time knew anything about meditation or yoga. It really wasn't prominent in Australia. Um, and it was in the very early days in Perth where I started looking and I came across Ananda Marga and out of the different groups I looked at, this was the most promising. So that was when I was 19 in 1973. Um, it was the, the beginning of all the international spiritual groups coming or really probably going around the world uh, and they were just coming into Australia and very just coming into Western Australia, into Perth. Mm. So um, how long before after that did you uh, finally get to meet your guru? Quite a long time, actually. So it was 73 when I was initiated. Um, and I didn't get to see Baba until 1980. Uh, and that was because of all the turmoil happening in India. At the time, Australians couldn't travel there. Um, I was actually, I believe, one of the first, certainly Australians, going into India legitimate, legitimately with a visa um, and going in without being stopped and returned back to Australia. Wow. So that was in 1980, and I went there with my wife, Asherova. What was that like? It was quite a shock for me coming from quiet little old Australia and not having travelled anywhere in the world at the time except New Zealand. Uh, so arriving in Calcutta directly from Australia and just the hustle and bustle of India at that time. Somehow or other, we found our way to central office and from there got accommodation and lined up what Bubba's itinerary was, and I think I went Im immediately that evening round to his house in Lake Gardens. So that would have been quite a, an experience, an adjustment, seeing Bubba, I'd imagine? It was. Uh, after years of meditation, years of looking at Bubba's picture, uh, and then finally getting to meet him, uh, and at the time, Bubba was actually really very accessible. Um, anyone, any Margi could go to his house and wait just inside the driveway and Bubba would be coming down for kill walk or to go to the office or many things like this and he would pass by and he'd often stop and talk with who was there or comment. In some way, yes. So what was your first experience with Baba? We would have been singing Kiritan in the driveway and Baba would have come down for field walk, I believe, and, and he just stopped and spoke with some Acharya there uh, and we eagerly listened to every word that he said and um, then he got in his car and drove off and, and then later he would come back and there would be a similar routine where he would walk in if he wanted to, he would talk with anyone or just go in Amaskar and then go up to his quarters. So what were your fond memories meeting Baba? Oh, a lot of fond memories because I was there for three months. Um, spent the entire time in Calcutta. Went virtually every day and every night to Baba's house. Uh, and was able to see him during that entire time. Uh, so it was virtually continuous unless Baba wasn't there or uh, I, I don't think there was. Well, the, uh, I think the only time I, I wasn't there at his house was when he went somewhere for a few days 
and uh, we then did some other things. But it was really, I was there to see Baba. And there were so many instances of lovely, lovely kirtans. So Ashrava is a singer-songwriter. She was a beautiful play of the guitar. And we did many, many really good kirtans. And we also had a few other friends from Australia who made it over at the same time. So did and, you have... Uh, what was that? Did you have PC with Baba? Yes, I did. Uh, it took quite a while. Um, and eventually I did have PC and it was one of those... <laughs> one of those ones where... As I found quite a bit with Bubba to be around him, uh, your mind kind of just goes not blank, but into this kind of serene state uh, where I often found it hard to sort of go, what on earth is happening here? Um, I did re remember lots of it. And in PC, yes, I did eventually got to have PC in his private quarters. Um, so can, can you say take it through that? <laughs> um, no, no, there's not, not a lot to really say about PC with Baba. It's more other things that struck me in very different ways with Baba. Right. Uh, I went on field walk with him a number of times. Um, sometimes it was a little bit comical where uh, the Acharya in charge at the time is looking out the front gate going, where are those other Acharyas coming to see Bubba to go on field walk, prearranged to go on field walk? And Bubba comes down, he gets into his car, there's no Acharyas. And they're looking out the gate, where are they, where are they? And finally, it's like, they're not here, what are we going to do? And Bubba just, uh, the Acharya turns to me and goes, do you want to go on field walk? And I go, yes. <laughs> and so I went on field walk with Bubba. And as we drove out the gate and just began driving down the road, three or four rickshaws of acharyas turn the corner and see his car disappearing off in the distance and they were just late and they missed out or maybe they got a second time to have a go but it was times like that it was quite funny and he would i would sit in awe really next to him and uh, even though internally i might have lots and lots of questions uh, I found it difficult to actually frame them into anything. So it was usually Bubba who would ask me something and and I would come out with rather inane answers to it all, uh, unfortunately. He, he'd just sort of say something like, what's the weather like in Australia at the moment, Graham? Or Gyanishvah. And I'd go, ah, uh, in my head I'm thinking it's a very big country, it has different weather in different places. Really, it was winter at the time, but I was thinking it's hot in some places and cold and snowing in other places. And I and that's what I said. I said, oh, it's a very big country. Uh, it, it could be snowing here or it could be hot there. And instead, I should have just said, it's the winter season across the entire of Australia. And uh, instead, I said, it's different temperatures. <laughs> which was not the accurate, and Bubba sort of quizzically looked at me and went, oh, really? Who would have thought it would have been winter? <laughs> so it's things like that, and, and I think possibly in that one, we're going along, driving along, and what was more memorable was Bubba talking to me at one point there, and he leant over, and he cupped his hand on the back of my neck like this and just sort of spoke to me quietly about something and then took his hand away. And I felt he did something. I have no idea what it was, but I just felt, felt an incredible surge of energy. Uh, his touch on my neck like that, and I'd never seen him do this to anyone before. 
uh, was very unusual. It wasn't just like someone going like this. It was like something happened. Um, so that's very memorable. It sticks in my mind completely. Um, Did you, was there any noticeable change after that? <laughs> no, no, you know, I can't say, oh, suddenly this happened or something like that. Um, but that sense of his hand on my neck like this, cupping the back of my neck, stayed with me for an incredibly long time, and I still think of that. Did, was it, there a lot it, of heat or energy coming from his hand? No, it wasn't really like heat or energy. What can I say? It was it, He did something. Something happened. Oh, I don't right. know what it was, Very but subtle. it was unbelievably memorable. Mm. The touch of Baba physically actually touching me was... Unusual, certainly for me, it's the only time he touched me in that way, uh, and I felt something happen. Whereas I can say a, a, another instance was uh, there's about 10 of us in the driveway waiting for Bubba to come down to go on his field walk, and he comes down and he walks up into the garden and lawn area which is about two feet higher than the driveway. So he steps up some steps, looks around the garden, goes around, does an inspection on the garden area, and then comes back to the top of the steps that went down to the driveway. So there's about 10 people standing down there singing Kiritan or something like that. And Bubba just stood at the top of the steps and we we had stopped Kiritan, and he just looked at everyone. And all I can say is I felt this tremendous amount of energy radiating from Baba. He was just standing there. I think he was just standing there like this, but he was looking at everyone intently and not moving. And this energy was just surging through my body, and it got bigger and bigger and huger and it was rushing through my body and I'm standing there going what, what, uh, uh, uh. I'm not moving my hands but I'm just going what is going you know whoosh and it went on for a few minutes until it reached this crescendo where I couldn't contain myself at any more and I just burst into laughter and at exactly the same time, everyone else here burst into laughter as well. And Bubba then just turned and went and got into his car to drive off. And he got in his car, drove away, and I spoke with other people there, and they said they felt exactly the same thing. Uh, Bubba did something. Bubba raised their kundalini. Uh, he emanated energy out to all of us. And it was significant, and yet it was just him standing there. When he got into the car, was it in a very nonchalant way? Yes, he didn't. He didn't uh, in any way overtly acknowledge that he'd done something, or you know, uh, he just got into his car. The car drove off and went away. Nothing, nothing unusual had happened. Yes, it was just like this is normal, or I've given you a little present. Yeah, You know, it was something like that. Yeah. Uh, no reason why, no overt reason why he did that. Um, <laughs> we weren't singing particularly good Kirtan, but sometimes we did. Sometimes we really managed to just galvanise all of our passion into singing, and Bubba would comment on that. Mm -hmm. uh, he could hear it up in the house, and we'd be singing what else are we going to do? We're standing there listening to Kiritan. Uh, we'd, we'd often have a guitar there. Um, uh, matter of fact, uh, Ashriva and I were walking around the area and we saw a little music store. And it was jam-packed with instruments and they're all hanging down from the ceiling and there's sitars and tablets and drums and cymbals and 
And to walk into the shop, you had to bob your head to go through all this stuff that was in there. And we'd gone deliberately looking for a music store because at Bubba's house in the meditation room, in the Dhamma Chakra room, was a guitar, but the neck was completely snapped. And so I'd taken this guitar looking for a music store. I found this store and I went in with it and I, you know, on the off chance that someone may be able to repair this. And so I went in there and showed the person behind the counter and he, he looked at it and it literally was just snapped. Someone had trodden on it or something. It was all jagged edges. And uh, he said, yes, I think I can repair this. Come back in a week. We came back in a week and you could not see the joint. It was an unbelievably good job. Uh, it was a sound guitar. And in talking to him, I found out that he made um, uh, uh, tablas and sitars for the top performers in India, Ravi Shankar, Ali Akbar Khan, and he had this tiny little shop. So we then, from at an early stage when I got this guitar repaired, were able to play kirtans for Baba with the guitar. And so our... our Kirtan improved. And sometimes Bubba would come down and he'd go, they are so in the spirit tonight. There is so much energy. Very good, very good. And then go off and get in his car. Wow. Okay, anything else you can delight us with? <laughs> oh, so many interesting stories. Uh, One time Baba came down and we're there in the morning and he would often come down from upstairs and do an inspection of the gardens and look at all the orchids and look at all the plants and comment uh, to his personal assistant who was looking after the gardens and going, you need to do this. What is happening with this plant? Have you been taking care of it? Uh, so on like this. And... Um, this time he comes down, he does a little bit of an inspection of the garden and he looks over and it is, I think this morning, it is only Usher of an eye there in, in the driveway waiting to see him. So we did have some very lovely times because it would only be just the two of us in the whole garden and Bubba coming through. And so those times we often, he would talk just directly to us rather than if there was a group of 10 or 15. Sometimes there was even 20 if a whole load of acharyas came from overseas and they'd all be cramming in and we'd end up at the back of the row or something. But in this time, there was just the two of us and brothers looked at all the plants and he's nearby, but he's still looking at plants. And he looked over at us and... At that time, he had not been driving to the office during the day. He had refused to go to the office and attend meetings or see acharyas there because he was dissatisfied with the work they were doing. And so here he is in the gardens looking around and he turns over to us and he goes, I'm going to the office today. And we went, oh. <laughs> and he continues around the garden doing things. And he again comes back around and he turns to us and looks over at us again and says, I'm going to the office this morning. And we we're like, yeah. <laughs> and then it dawned on us. <laughs> he was actually telling us, not only was he telling us he's going to the office, he was indicating that we should do something about this. And Baba then went inside and we went, Oh, he's going to the office. He hasn't been to the office. We immediately ran out, grabbed a rickshaw, drove straight over to central office, uh, saw the acharyas there and said, we've just come from Bubba's house. He's just said he's coming to the office. And they went, what do you mean he's coming to the office? He doesn't, he's not coming. And I said, he just told us twice. I am coming to the office this morning. Finally, they actually got it that Bubba was coming. And they went, quick, everyone, clean the office, get everything ready, blah, 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 like this. And so they frantically were running everywhere, 
cleaning the whole place, getting everything ready, getting their reports ready because they knew he would be coming to us. And eventually Bubba turns up and we were waiting out the front of the office there, singing to it and smiling very broadly that he had used us as this instrument mm. to send a message to the office. Um, and he, he, he goes in and he does all of this, um, uh, all of his report, reporting and everything with the Acharyas there. And, and then he finishes and he drives back to Lake Gardens. I'm always wanting to look at opportunity and see what's the best I can get out of it. So <laughs> he went to the head of Chari and I said, see, I told you Bubba was coming. Uh, uh, you know, are you happy? He said, I'm so happy, Yanishvar, that you came across and you told us this. You know, we would have been all caught out, unaware he was coming, da -da -da, like this. And I said, so could I ask you a small favour? <laughs> and he goes, what? And I said, can I see Bubba's office? And he said, mm -hmm. okay, the, uh, you, you've, come, you've done us a big favour. Yes, you can come up and see Bubba's private office. I said, can I take some photos? <laughs> and he went, oh, okay. So I was able to go into Bubba's office there and take photos of the area of different things. Uh, and those are photos I put in the book that I eventually wrote about this three-month period that I spent with Baba. What's the name of the book? The book is Walking with the Master. Ah. Oh. There. And I think okay. I even have, have I got the photo of, from early in, in the phase of seeing Baba there, uh, every morning and every night, either chatting with him or other acharyas or other people would arrive and Bubba would talk to them and, and often he would say, um, you have a question, my boy? What is it? What is it? And acharya would have some burning question and go, Bubba, I've always wondered about blah, 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 blah. And Bubba would then give an answer and it could be quite long. And it would be about philosophy or it would be about sadhana in some way or world events or kraut. And very quickly on, I went, gee, saying so many things, um, I should write these down. And when I go back to Australia, I can tell people what Bubba said and, and we can put it in the newsletter that I edited and things like this. And so... I would just went out and got a little notebook and after Bubba had come down, got in his car and driven away, I would just sit quietly in the garden and I'd write down what had happened, what Bubba had said, who had asked the question or anything like that. And if I was unsure about something, I could ask either the person who Bubba directly talked with about that or I could ask Ashriva or one of the other people who stay behind, what did Baba say about doing Tandala? And I'd go, right, okay, he said, yeah, I thought he said that and that. So I could confer with people to, to get it a little accurate. After a while, this became quite a lot of writing. I had to get another notebook and start writing in that one. And then one point there in the middle of it all, I got very busy. I can't remember why, what happened. And it was like night time. We finished. We're still there. We're all talking. I hadn't written in the book what Bubba had said that evening. And in my mind, I'm thinking, I'll write that tomorrow morning. And we go to our accommodation. I'm really tired. I go to sleep. I get up in the morning. Oh, I've got to get the bubbers. I run over to bubbers. He comes down. He goes again. I can't remember why, but I didn't write in the book again. Now, I didn't tell anyone this. This is just me doing my own thing. Even Ashrava didn't know when I wrote in or didn't write in the book, uh, except if I asked her a question about it. So I missed another day and it got through to the evening. And I still hadn't written up. So it was like a day and a half of Bubba talking and I had failed to record it. And I just kept on going, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll write all of that later. 
and it went on like this. So Bubba comes down and he's talking to people and then he comes to me. Often we're in a line and he might come along and talk individually with each person. And he comes to me and he says, so have you been getting it all down? And I go, well, what do you mean? Because <laughs> I'm not thinking of it in context of anything. Sorry, Baba, I don't understand. And he says, are you writing it all down? And I go, oh, no. How does he know that I haven't, I've missed a day and a half of writing? And I go, uh, and I kind of buff my way through it and say, most of it, Baba. Um, trying to cover up my failings. And Bubba says, you should write everything down. Not for you, but for all of the others to come. And then I got it. I went, oh. And from then on, I diligently wrote everything and made sure that I had it all down. Um, and the plan was to then go, okay, uh, what what will I do with this when I get back to Australia? Will I, you know, uh, put it in a newsletter, so on like that? And that got enormously delayed until I finally got to a point where I could write it and I wrote it into a full book. And whenever Baba mentioned something, I would then use his other writings to explain in much more detail something that he might say a small amount to in reference to a particular question. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it is direct service you've done. Thank you. 2003, I got very, very sick. So sick, I could have died. I ended up in hospital and they needed to do open heart surgery. Um, and they weren't sure whether my heart had been damaged or not. But luckily, it wasn't, but they still had to do open heart surgery to realize, to find that out. And I had a dream before I went into surgery, which was that um, I was I was in PC with Bubba. <laughs> and, and I've got all of these questions in my mind, all the questions I should have asked him when I was in India, all these questions like... What is the world about? What are we doing with this? What is my life all about? Everything like this. And Baba calls me over to him and I'm brimming with a million philosophical questions. And when Baba asks, you know, goes, okay, talk, the only thing that comes into my mind right then is, I'm not well, Baba. What should I do? And Baba gets up and, he's, and he says, I'm going to show you an asana. And he gets up and he does this asana where he puts his hands out like this, stands on tiptoes, and lightly raises his body like that. Now, I've checked this out. There's no known asana like this. And the dream kind of finished after that. And I went, well, what's this all about? And it was what I realized was that I wasn't taking my asana seriously and, and on the dream, Barbara had said, this is very important. This, this will work for you. And um, I realized that oh, he was saying even a subtle thing like that can have a big difference. Um, and, and so that, that, was, that was also after I got well after that, and, of course, I diligently did all my asanas. But after that, I, as you do when you have a near death, experience I went is there anything I haven't done in my life and I went the book and that I then wrote the book wow. and got that done hmm. so brother what are you doing now what am I doing now um I was overseas traveling for quite a long time. I made a lot of documentary films out of that. I decided I wanted to be back in Australia. I'm now working uh, in a not-for-profit social enterprise 
uh, the Byron Community Centre that does a lot of work in the area with disadvantaged people. And I work as a manager across four community markets where all the profits out of that goes into the welfare programs of the community centre. So very happy doing that kind of work. Well, thank you again, Israji, for sharing that with us. Um, that's very inspiring. And um, thanks again. Namaskar. Yeah.